not square root of square root, but square it. If I square both sides, it's illegal to do. You can do pretty much darn near anything you want to to an equation, almost. Anything you want to to an equation as long as you do both sides. Which means that uh, even if, even Joe, if you had changed it to a one-half power to get rid of the one-half, you'd still multiply it <coughs> by two, correct? That would be essentially the same exact thing as squaring it. So square both sides. Notice you're going to get y equals... Now say what you said, Alan. What do you do next? There you go. Zero equals y to the fourth minus y. Now what would you do? Factor. Sure. We can factor as much as needed. Here, y equals y cubed minus 1. Now, when you do this problem, you're going to get y equals 0 and y cubed minus 1 equals 0. Can you solve for y? Yes. Yes, you can. Add 1 and take a cube root, and you're going to get still 1. The only way this is working is if y equals 1. That's the only way that happens with a cube. Not negative one because it's not a square. It's a cube. So the only way you're getting one from cubing a number is with positive one. Negative one cubed is negative one. That's the only thing that, that would work. If you want to show it explicitly, you'd have y equals the cube root of one, and that is one. By a show of hands, how many people feel okay getting that far? Yes, yes. Yeah. It is some algebra, but it's kind of nice to review that so you don't get stuck on the algebra when you're trying to do calculus. That's the biggest problem with calculus. Hey, do we know where our integral starts and stops? Where? Along the y or the x? Very good, because this is in terms of y. We solve for y. So already we know that v equals 0 to 1 in terms of y. Now, hmm. The idea of which one's on top changes when I'm talking about the y. On top doesn't mean this way anymore. On top means this way right now. Do you get that? So really we're asking which one is on the right and which one is on the left. You still do it the same way though. You still, I mean basically, you, you don't even have to draw a picture or think of it. You just have to plug in a number and figure out which one's bigger, that goes first. Which one's smaller, that goes second. That still works. Only bigger this time means right. Smaller means left, and then you'll be revolving that. I'm not sure if you're okay with that. I know we're talking lots of theory here, and not lots of theory, but it's it's abstract because I can't draw a lot of this stuff very well. So how do you do it? Same thing we just did here. Same thing. Zero and one. We'll take a number and we're going to plug it in to right here. What number are we, are we thinking about? You could do 0.5. I might do uh, 1 fourth because I can take a square root of it very easily. And I'm going to have to take a square root. Do you understand? Maybe take 1 fourth. So if I plug in 1 fourth, just do it to both. This gives you a half. This gives you 1 16th. And we can clearly see which one is bigger and which one is smaller by using some numbers that we actually understand. So which one is the bigger one? So then square root of y goes on the top. Nice graphic organizer, huh? Tells you which one exactly goes where. Which one is on the bottom? Now, of course, bottom means left, top means right. But you set it up the same, the same way, same way. So which one, in other words, is going to come first? The square root of y or y squared? Okay, fill out the integral for me. So what am I going to have? So the square root of y squared? Pi. 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 Okay, can't forget the pi. Square root of y. I heard squared. Very good. And then? Yeah, don't make the mistake of putting a plus, right? We're, we're actually subtracting volumes here. Subtracting, uh, I'm sorry, surface area, and then revolving that. So I'll make that bracket. What's the next one? I heard you. I'm going to write it this way. Feel comfortable setting up the integral? Notice really the setup and the plug-in and numbers is the hard part here. <coughs> the hard part. Uh, the integrals, most of them are going to be very doable for you because otherwise we get stuck. You know, maybe I'll pull that pi out of here. 
we got a constant anyway, we may as well pull that out. Square root of y squared, that's kind of nice. I just get y. Minus, this is going to give you y to the fourth, dy. Not such a bad integral to do after all. We get a pi. We're going to get y squared over 2 <coughs> minus y to the fifth over 5. And we're evaluating from 0 to 1. Let's plug in the 1 first. That's what it says to do. So we're going to do 1 squared over 2. That's just 1 half. Minus 1 to the fifth over 5. That's just 1 fifth. I'll check the 0, but I know I'm getting 0 minus 0. That's still 0. 1 half minus 1 fifth should be 3 3 tenths. Bam. Not too bad. Not too bad. As long as you understand the idea here that find out where they, they actually intersect. Set up the integral appropriately. Make sure you can find out which one comes first and which one comes second. And then it's all about the formula work. Just plugging it in. By a show of hands, how many people feel okay with what we've talked about so far? Now I'm going to give you one more. Uh, I would consider this to be kind of a, a tougher problem. But it's going to take us a little while for me to explain it to you. But I want you to see it. I don't think I've given you any homework on it. I might have. I don't think that I have. I don't think I changed the assignment. But I will certainly give you something to do with this. So see if you can comprehend the idea here. What if I ask you to find the volume of the solid contained by this and that is revolved around y equals 3 halves. That's an interesting question. It says, right now we're not going around an axis. Right now it says, imagine this. You have some sort of an area, right? Instead of revolving around a y-axis or an x-axis, you're saying, pick some line. Revolve it around that. Can you still do it? The answer is, yeah, we can, as long as you understand what the concept is that we're doing here. Now, I'm going to draw the picture of what this is. What this is. You don't necessarily need the picture to do it. Uh, you can do it the way I, I showed you, as long as you understand what's going on. So I'm going to illustrate it so you do understand the way it's going on. First thing I want you to get a picture of is what's taking place. Now that's a pretty easy function. That just says y equals x, yeah? And this one says y equals x cubed, which looks essentially like this for this interval. And if you really want to find out where they intersect, where, where could you do it? Or how could you do it? Okay. So if I set them equal, I would get x equals x cubed. I would get 0 equals x cubed minus x. I would get 0 equals x squared minus 1. For the sake of, sorry, for the sake of keeping it easy, I'm just going to focus on the positive here. We're going to get 0, 1, and negative 1. I'm going to, just so you make a note of this, I'm going to ignore this one to keep it easy for us. Also, you can think back to odd and even functions. If I were to revolve, oh no, that's not true because we're revolving around something that's not x axis. Disregard that statement. To keep it easy, mm -hmm. I'm going to keep between 0 and 1, just so we make it easy on ourselves. You can do another, you could, you could also do this with the negative portion of this, but it would be a different integral. You'd have to do two different ones. Now that won't keep up any of the volume or area? Of course it will. If I remember that this is going to, this would also do this, right? I'm saying, let's, just to find out what this is going to be, let's forget about this for a second. 
because you'd have to do a different integral anyway. You'd have to set up a completely different integral anyway. Because they cross over. One's not on top of the other one the whole way. So you have to do a different one anyway. Let's just focus on this one for right now and see how to do the problem in, in the first place. Do you understand what I'm trying to do here? So all I'm really saying is this is 0 and this is 1. That's what I'm saying. <clears throat> now, so we see the area. What are we going around? This? This? Are we going around this? No. What is y equal 3 halves? Is it a, oh come on, you should know. Is it this way? Or this way? It's this way. Y equals 3, y equals a constant, just gives you a horizontal line. Y equals 5 would be at 5. Y equals 2 would be at 2. Y equals 3 over 2 would be at 1 and a half. So if this is 1, which it is, 1, 1, what we're talking about <clears throat> is can you revolve this figure around that, treating that like the axis? Now that's a really interesting question, isn't it? It's kind of it kind of crazy. Can you can you do it? Well, we're gonna think through it as to how in the world we might do this, and it's gonna stem from this formula, but we're gonna change it just a little bit. By the way, with questions on that, <laughs> no. I asked you that though already. I think. <coughs> around that one. Now let's think of what, what actually is going on here. Um, what does this represent in our formula? The top, sure. But what is this? Well, let me, let me, I'll kind of split it apart for you again. A to B pi f of x squared. Yeah minus g of x squared dx. You know, before we go any further, I better make this clear also. What should our variables be in terms of x's or y's? Okay. X's. Because we're, we're really going this way around the, that. It's almost like an x-axis that's been moved up a little bit. Do you get why we're in terms of x and not y? If it was this way, yes, y. Basically it goes, uh, where's the, where are the planes perpendicular to that you're going to find the area of, and then uh, it, consequently the volume? They're perpendicular to the x-axis still, so they're, they have to be this way in terms of x. Well, what does it mean when I do this? What are those things? What do those look like? Circles. They're circles. So what is f of x? Radius. Say it again. It's a radius. What is g of x? A radius. Now, that worked very well because f of x can be considered a radius if you're going from the x-axis, can't it? This would be the radius of that figure being involved, and this would be the radius. However, I'm not going around this. Now I'm going around this. So if we can find out 